Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and today we're going to be looking at Samsung Goodlock. Goodlock was released in 2016 for the Galaxy S7 series, and it was basically a way of customizing your lock screen. Now, since then, they've added many more features, and we're going to go through those today, one at a time, so we can see exactly how customizable your Galaxy actually is. So because this is going to be quite a long video, I'm going to split it off into separate videos for each of the different Goodlock applications. So I'll put links down below so you can actually hop straight to whichever one you want to see. So Goodlock is available from the Samsung Galaxy Store. So just go into the store on your phone and search for Goodlock and install it. And you can see here by Samsung Electronics. Install this and once you open it, you will be presented with a screen similar to this. Now I've installed all the additional plugins or applications here just so I can go through them all but it doesn't come pre-installed with all of them so hopefully after watching this video you'll know which ones are the right ones for you. Okay the first app we're going to be looking at is Lockstar which is what a good lock was originally actually made for. So this allows you to customize your lock screen. So once it's been enabled at the top here we can now edit our lock screen. So you get a cho choice to move the clock wherever you like. So if you want it down at the bottom there, you could do. You see it snaps and justifies itself either to the right or to the left or center. You can also move your notifications wherever you like on the screen, which is quite nice. So you could have a rather horrendous layout like that, or I think I'm going to pop mine up there and have maybe my notifications centralized down in the middle of the phone screen. Now you can also customize the shortcuts here. So we could change that to the phone. We could change it to anything we want basically. And a bit later on, we can actually add additional icons down here, which I'll show you. So there are some different wallpapers you can choose from. I'll just quickly run through them. So that's quite a nice one. So I'm going to just go back to the position, maybe move my notifications up slightly. Now you obviously can't move the fingerprint scanner because that's under the glass and fixed. So that's the wallpaper there. If we go to the clock now, we can see all these different clock faces we can choose from. We can also set the size of the clock. So I'm gonna stick mine on the maximum size and I'll just run through the different clock styles so you can have a quick look at how they appear on the screen. So you can see there's quite a few different ones to choose from. I'm going to just leave mine as one of these sort of speedometer type ones. And we'll move on to the next item down here, which is items. So here we can actually customize what is allowed to be displayed on the screen. So the face widget, these, this will be the actual clock. So we can turn that on and off. We can enable or disable the help text down at the bottom. So the message to where to place your fingerprint on the scanner or any other sort of charging notifications that appear down here, 
we can turn these on and off. We can also set the shortcuts here, so we can have them as default or multiple. If we have them as multiple, we can then add additional applications to be used down here. So I'm just going to add seven ones at the bottom there. And before I show you that on the screen in its final state, we can also customize the notifications to either have just the icons or to have the details with the icons as well, or completely turned off. So I'm going to save that as icons only. And now on my lock screen, I've now got it how I set, set it up with the additional seven applications down here, which I can quickly launch. That's a bit of a shame really that the lock screen doesn't stay on a bit longer than this, but that is what it's set to here. So even if the screen timer is set to two minutes, it doesn't seem to actually uh, stay on for two minutes. Okay, next up we have Quickstar. This allows you to customize your notification drawer. So if we go into here, we can see we can choose from some predetermined or predefined color schemes. So we have a nice purple and white one there. So yellowy mustard color and black. We have some other ones here. And a rather horrible red and green one there. So I quite like the yellow and black one there. It's quite a nice scheme. Okay, so you can of course create your own color settings as well if you so wish. So you choose a sort of representative color first, so we're going to go for a, a green, maybe a light green color. And now we can actually set what we want our icons to look like when they're on. So maybe we want a deeper green or a brighter green. When it's off, maybe we want a sort of orange color. We can set the font color here, so you can really, you know, customize it as much as you like. And we're going to go for a bit of a pinky purple color. You can set the BG Alpha here. As you can see, just take out some of the garishness of it all. And then turn the blur effect on or off. So when you pull down how much blur is in the background, if any. So we're going to set that up to about level four. And if we click the apply button, we've now got our customized notification drawer. You can actually also configure the icons you see at the top of your sort of status bar here. So I've turned off the alarm because I don't need to know that the alarm is turned on. So you can see here it's being removed from the top here. You can also, if you wish, remove your mobile data signal icons. You can remove the Wi-Fi icon and you can really clean up your status bar at the top here. Now I'm going to keep my Wi-Fi there. Don't really need the battery icon, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I think I will probably keep my mobile data or signal icons up there. So we've also got these three options up here, whether you want to show your notification information on the idle screen, whether you want to show it on the lock screen. So you turn that off and then people won't know what provider you are using. And also whether you want to show it down at the bottom of the panel here. So if I turn that off, we've now removed our provider settings down here, which I think is quite a nice little feature. There's no real reason to have those showing. We can also customize the position of the clock. So by default, it's on the left hand side. We can turn it off completely or move it across to the right hand side. And as you read here, there are some issues if you have it on the right hand side that system icons could start overlapping each other. So that's just a bit of a warning there. I'll leave it on the left. That's what I'm used to currently. Now the last option here in Quickstar is the option to configure a notification pop-up button. So what this does basically is allows you to have a pop-up window of whatever the notification is appear on your screen. So for example here, if I swipe this notification across, 
In fact, let's use the battery monitor. And then we press the pop-up button here. The app will actually be opened in a pop-up window for me to you know, check the status of what the alert was. And then if I want to maximize it, I can then make it full screen. I can just close it off. I can minimize it into a little bubble. Or I can adjust the transparency. So I'm going to close it off. And that's quite a nice little handy feature there to have. So that was Quickstar, which is quite a nice little uh, customization tool. You can really get you know, into some detailed customizations with it. I'm going to turn it off for the notification panel color and just have the default settings with my night mode. But all the other settings I've configured, such as removing the alarm clock, etc., have been saved. OK, next up we have Task Changer. So with this enabled, you get to choose a different type of layout for your switching tasks here. So there's several to choose from. We have the stack, which you've just seen. We have a list. We have a grid layout. We have a carousel. We have a slim list. And we have a vertical stack, which you may have seen in previous versions of Android. So with each of these different layouts, you can actually customize how they look further still. So with the layout stack, we have mini mode, so we can actually enable that and the stack will appear in the bottom half of the screen here. So this is good for one handed operation. We can turn on or off the blurring. We can center the current running app. So as soon as you press that, the actual app that you're using will be centered. Whereas if it's turned off, it's currently moved to the side so you can quickly switch between things. We can turn on or off the gesture effect. And we can also allow it to swipe the bottom area to switch to the previous app. Now in the list layout, we can blur, we can change the effect here to on and off. And again, apply the gestures. Grid is the same. Carousel, we can change the actual scroll effect. So we've got the cube in, which is the default. We've got cube out. I'll just turn off the mini mode, see it better. So this is like a cube that's been wrapped that way instead. We've got a linear one, so that'll just be a straight line. We've got a scale. So whichever is active sort of pops up further into the screen. Got a rotation up. So this is almost like they're hanging off a, a washing line or something. And we have a rotation down. So this is like a stack of cards almost. So again, we can have the mini mode on and off this. We can blur, centralize, apply the cube effect or switch to apps with a gesture. Slim list, we don't get anything special. We just get the standard three options. And with the vertical stack, again, same options, but we can centralize the currently running app. So for me, I quite like the carousel with maybe a rotation up effect. That's quite a cool looking uh, way of switching apps, I think. So that was Task Changer. Not much to it, but you know, it just adds a bit of bit of flair to your uh, switching of tasks. Right next up is Clock Face. So if we go into here, we can set the clock style for our always on display or the lock screen. I'm going to go for lock screen here. And you get to choose from these clocks here. And if we click onto the end icon here, we actually get a much bigger array of clocks to choose from. Now you've seen all these on the previous app which was inside the Lockstar. But here this just lets you specifically choose, say, this clock here and apply that. 
and we're going to set the color. We can choose different colors here from any color we can think of. And that is our new lock screen clock. Right, next up we have Multistar. Now this is quite a nice little application which allows you to open apps which shouldn't normally be allowed to be opened in split screen view in split screen view. So once you've enabled this and enabled the multi window to all apps, you do need to reboot your phone when you do this. You can then actually choose multiple apps to put into split screen mode. So for example, maybe there's two games you want to play at the same time. So if I just run through the options here and then I'll show you how it actually works. So do the quick launch here so we can hold, I've set it to hold the recent key here to actually launch this. I think that's the easiest way to do it. We've enabled it for all apps. Multi-window zoom, so when the app is running with the multi-window, the screen is reduced to show a lot of the content. So if you want it scaled down as if it's like a little mini screen, you could enable that. I've turned it off because I didn't uh, find I actually required it, but there's potentially some apps where you may need to turn that on. I've enabled multi-focus so that if you're in an app on the left-hand side and you're no longer using the app on the right-hand side, it doesn't suddenly you know, time out or anything. It will carry on going. Now you have some other settings here where you can actually set an app to be in the pop-up view. So it pops up out of where the main screen is and then you can have it floating around on the screen. Now here you can actually set the size of the screen that you want to be able to allow this in. So if I set it to the biggest, for example, if I swipe diagonally across here or diagonally across here, the app I'm in will open up into the pop-up view. So I can just give that a quick try. And here we go, we've got a good block in the pop-up view. So you can see here, it pops up into its own window. Now I've found that I actually need to have that quite small because I was finding it was popping up, up when I was trying to scroll the navigation status bar down. So I have mine to about here, and then I know that I can still do that if I so wish. So here we can also enable the pop-up to view the last uh, way you had it before. So if you set it to a certain size and you wanted it to always be that size when you pop up, then you can turn that on. We can also enable the prevention of the pop-up view minimization. We can change the split screen color here. So the color bar that's between your two apps. Let's put it as a red one so we can see it easily. And we can see here that these two are now included starting with Android Q, this is a default option, and this one has been moved into the sound assistant for multi-sound. Okay, so let's go through an example of using Multistar with our multi-window. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into an app, say The Sims. Now, once we're in this app, if we bring up the task switcher and press and hold, we can now choose our second app to go into, so, I'm going to load up Dream Hospital here. And you can see we now actually have two games running at the same time. And we could, you know, play and do whatever we wanted to do without actually having to go into different apps. So it's quite good, the sound as you can hear works from both games at the same time and you can just play two games at the same time. Now obviously you can use it with any other app, so web browsing, YouTube, you know, have a video playing here whilst browsing the internet there and yeah that's quite a good one actually, I think a lot of people find that quite useful. Right next up we have Navstar, now this is quite a nice little one, you may have noticed I've already customised mine here, but you can actually set different icons for your navigation bar here at the bottom. Obviously if you don't use the navigation bar then this won't apply to you but there are some quite uh, nifty little ones that you can choose from. Now, as you can see this one here is a bit weird. This is actually one that I created myself just as a test. So what you can actually do is go to new configuration. You can choose the background colour of your nav bar. Don't get many to choose from here. So once you've set your background colour to whichever one you want you can then choose the button layout here. So you have the default you have a right aligned, left aligned, or you can actually add additional buttons. So 
So the buttons you can add are for the camera, screen capture, screen off, internet, up, down, left, right, F4, F5, key space, forward, media previous, media next, play or pause, open notification panel, page up and page down. So these are really quite nice. So I'd actually quite like a play and pause button on my nav bar here. So I can press it and then I can drag it across to where I'd like to stick it. So maybe on the right, maybe on the left hand side there. And I'd probably like to go with a notification panel option as well here. So we can have these two additional features and add them onto the bottom of our bar here. Next up, we can actually change the icons here. So for example, my home button, we have a selection to choose from. Now this is the same for each of the buttons. So I'll just quickly go through them. And if you click on more icons here, you can actually go to your gallery and select a picture and set that as your button. So I'm just gonna go into this album here, select my item, and then you'll be asked do you want to crop the item or not. I'm gonna click on yes, just use the gallery to do it. And here I can actually set the size I want to crop it to. Click on done, and that will now be my home button. We can set the multi-window one to be something completely different. We can even change the play and pause button. And we can set the transparency of the buttons on the bar as well. If you enable this, it will change the icon color automatically. Now that I believe is on dependent on the theme you're using. So I'm gonna leave that turned off. I'm gonna click on save. So the new one I've created is down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna click on there. And that's my new navigation bar. So let's try it out. I'm going to click on the home button. I'm now back home. I'm going to click on the notification drawer here. We're now in our notification panel. I'm just going to uh, try this out here in a podcast and you can see it's playing and pausing accordingly. So again, that is another one that I think is really useful. And I think, you know, the amount of customization you can do is, is really nice. And I, I believe you can have unlimited customizations with it as well. I'm just gonna go back to this just to be as clean as possible for the rest of the video. And we'll just go to the last advanced options here that you get to select. So with this enabled, you get a little dot here, which allows you to turn on and off your navigation bar by double tapping it. And it will auto hide. And then you have to swipe up to display it. So we can actually set it to be visible or not on the home screen. Now, for some reason, this doesn't actually appear to work because I can still see the bar. So it's, uh, it doesn't seem to be working. It could be that it was made for the older version of Android, maybe Android 9, and it's not working in Android 10 yet, but that option is there and I'm sure they'll fix it in a future update. And we can allow the rotation of the buttons on the navigation bar at the bottom here when you have your phone in a different orientation. So that's Navstar, that's a really nice one. I'd recommend that one as well. And we're now gonna move on to Home Up. So Home Up gives you additional customization for your home screen and for your app drawer. So here we can actually set the home screen grid to be, if we wanted, seven by seven. Now the maximum I think you can set it to is five by six in the default settings. But either way, you can actually set this now to seven by seven and the same for the app grid as well, seven by seven. So you can now see it's a lot easier to go through your apps. And again, the home screen now, we've now got an option for seven apps side by side. We can adjust the blur control here. So how blurry it is when your apps screen is actually in the front, so we don't want any blurring at all. Do that, and that just saves a bit of processing power, a bit of battery, but it does look nicer when it's blurred, so we'll leave it on slightly. We can also set the loop page adoption here. So what that does is allow you to 
keep scrolling through your apps here and it will never stop. Whereas without it on, you come to the end and you can't go past. We can also tell it to hide application labels. Now, I personally wouldn't do this because it looks a bit uh, looks a bit messy like this, but you can turn off all the labels for your applications if you so wish. Okay, so the next thing we can do in HomeUp is decorate our folders. So if we go into here, we can actually customize the look of our folders. So on your home screen, you normally get, you know, you can change colors and things here if you wish, but there's not a huge amount of customization that you can do for the actual folder itself. So in HomeUp, we can actually customize it to look exactly how we like. So we can check different options here for the font color and leave it as white. We can set the actual background of the folder itself when you open it up. So you can choose anything at all. You can set the transparency, so turn it off completely. We'll have it 70% transparent. And you can actually also adjust the corners of the folder itself. So we have a nice rounded one there. Let's check that out. Does help if you actually turn it on. Okay, so our folders will now all look like this. So you may want to customize it to look slightly less garish. Let's go for a blue color. It's a shame you can't actually set the size of this text to be slightly larger. But let's put a bit of transparency in there and maybe set the corners to be not quite surrounded. Okay, that's uh, reasonably nice. Now, if you want to enable machine learning on your phone, then you can actually disable pop-up folder and enable folder title suggestion. So what this will do is suggest names for the folders that you've got. So depending on what apps are in your folders, you can actually get it to automatically set one for you. So if I just click in here, We'll see here it's already suggested Samsung tools, which I've already set it to, accessories, utilities. So let's say we want to have utilities instead. Same for the media. If we click in here, we can set it to something else such as entertainment. So that's quite a nice little feature. And we can also set down here the actual grid inside the folder. So how many icons you want. So we can set it to 7x7 seven seven on both. So you can see here it's looking pretty tiny now, but you could have seven icons by seven and also in the preview. So I'm gonna set the preview one down a bit because I can't really see it. I'm gonna put that back to three by three. So the icons have appeared bigger here so I can quickly see what is in each folder. But when I go inside the folder, we can then have as many as seven by seven. So that's home up, it's quite nice uh, little Bit of customization you can do there and you can of course back up your different folder options here if you wanted to you can't back up if it's not the home and apps array that the home screen supports by default so that's probably because i've got the settings here to be seven by seven let's try change that back down to say five by five see if it's any happier now yeah so we can actually allow it to back up It has also had that error message again, but let's just try back up. Okay, so it's now saved our backup here. Let's try another one. And we've now got two different backups. It's not allowing you to do anything outside of the default uh, app arrangement, which is a bit of a shame really, because you'd probably quite like to be able to, you know, have different customizations uh, depending on what you're doing and who's using the phone, but it doesn't allow you to do that, sadly. Right, next up we have Notistar. Now this is a notification management service which allows you to keep track of all your notifications. You can organize them into groups of you know, family, friends, work, and it can keep pretty much unlimited notifications in its history. So once you open it, you'll see all your notifications that you've had. Now you can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. This is all of today's notifications. If we go into the settings here, we can set application lists, user filter lists, 
So an application list, for example, we can turn on and off. So if we want to only store notifications for WhatsApp, we can turn that on and that will be the only one that we are going to be looking at. And we can even do by user. So we can click on here and add a filter to only, I don't know, store details of notifications from a certain person or a certain keyword that comes up. Now you can turn the lock screen shortcut to it on and off. The shortcut here is the up to up arrows here. And I can quickly bring up my notifications and we can tell it how long to store the actual data. So by default, it's 30 days. You can go with no limit. Not sure how much space that would use up. Probably not too much because it's only details and text form. And we can also set the position, color and transparency of the icon. We can move it around slightly if we wanted to and change it to a different color. Set the transparency and then save that. So when it's on your lock screen, you can move up from here and then see your notifications. Right, so those are all the good lock units as they call them here. Now, if we go into the family tab here, we do have some additional good lock features, which I'm just going to go through now. So first up, we have theme park. Now this allows you to create your own themes and it's quite uh, customizable. So let's go into it and see what we can make. So we can actually base our theme off a picture. So I've chosen a picture of some flowers here and we can see by default, it's chosen very greeny colors for our theme that we're making here. Now this doesn't have to be the end result at all. You can, as you can see, go through and change exactly to whatever color you want in the rainbow. And it's just a sort of starter pack to get you going with your theme. So for the main wallpaper here, we actually get a chance to either change the wallpaper or crop it slightly differently. So maybe you want a different section of the photo. And maybe on this one, we want it in a different place. So we're now going to go to the style section. And we can select a main theme style here, which as it says here, sets the mood of the theme. So we're gonna go for a dark mode style one. We can get a closer look at the way it's going to look here if we want. And we can set our icon colors. These are the recommended ones for the style that we've chosen here. We can set the tray color. Maybe a nice pink color. And then set the label color as well. And we're gonna have to stick with the white there. You can choose whether you want to enable dark mode as well, which we're going to do. And obviously all the icons and bits and pieces will stay the same, but we will lose our customization that we did for the actual background styles or colors. But I think having a dark mode option is a fantastic idea just to save battery life and you know stop your screen burning your eyes. Once you're happy and you're all set up, click on the little button here and you give it a name. So we're going to give this one a name. We're just going to call it flowers. Okay. And it's now creating the theme for you. and installing it. So we now see our list of themes here and apply the flowers theme. We can have a quick look at it and apply that. So here's our theme. It's been applied nicely. We can see all our customizations are there. And it's as easy as that. Next up, we have a nice catch. Now, Apparently there's lots of people out there who get vibrations on their phone and they're not actually sure what's caused it. Now, I would suppose that's for people who 
have lots of friends and get lots of notifications. Luckily, I'm not one of those people, so I don't have that problem. But you can get a full sort of historic list of what apps have been vibrating your phone or ringing or sending you notifications. So these are the options you get here. Show a list of applications that made a vibration. Show a list of applications that changed the ringer mode. Show a list of applications that changed call mode. Histories of toast pop up. Show a list of applications that displayed ads after unlocking your phone. That's probably the most useful one for me actually. If you installed an app and you know a few days later you suddenly find that you're getting pop up ads, that'd be quite useful. You can see what's woken up your phone. So again, if you've ever had an app which just keeps you know waking your phone's display up, you can find out what it is and show a list of changes of any settings. So here's our toast history currently. And you can quickly see exactly what's been vibrating your phone. So let's have a look and see if there's any been commercials. So we've got some from Gmail, we've got some from WhatsApp. So it's interesting to know that these are actually somewhere, you know, displaying commercials, whether it's in the background or whether it's just that they're connecting to a commercial service. It's interesting to know that that is happening in the background. So all these notification details, they stay around for seven days and you can then, you know, you've got, you've got enough time to actually find out what's causing your problem. So it is useful. I don't think I would probably use it much, but you might as well have it turned on just in case you need it. Next up, we have the one handed operation plus. Now you're probably wondering why you need another one handed operation when you've already got the one handed mode here on the Galaxy S20 series and it was on the S10 series as well. Well, actually in here we have even more customization. And I think this is probably one of my favorite good lock features because it allows you to add these little handles here that you can see at the sides to perform various functions. So to really be one handed, you can set the bar on either side here to do certain things such as back key, recent key and the home key. So I know that if I pull this down, it's going to go home. I know that if I pull it to the left, it's going to go back. And if I pull it to the up position here, it's going to go to my recents. Now you can also set these to do pretty much anything you want. You can close apps, you can go to the app screen, you can do all these different features here. And I think it's really quite a nice little function to have. Personally, for one handed mode, I think if you can get to the home recent and go back with just one hand, you don't need to try and stretch down to the bottom here to actually access stuff. So we'll go through those in a short while. We can also enable a long swipe here. So we even get additional options depending on the length of our swipe. I haven't got that turned on personally at the moment, but you can, as you can see, add another set of actions to a long swipe. And here we can set the alignment here to be different depending on which side of the phone we're on. So if we've got, I don't know, it's good for people with disabilities if they have struggles on certain, you know, with one hand more than the other, then you could make the size of the handle bigger on one side compared to the other. And again, with the position as well. So here we can set app exceptions, whether we choose to not have these enabled in certain applications. That's quite useful if you find yourself backing out of an application accidentally, if there's one that you have to swipe around a lot frequently. We can turn on or off the animation that you saw as I use the swipe. We can enable quick actions before we release our finger from the screen. We can allow it to work in landscape mode or not. We can show persistent notification. So you can turn this on and off quickly. We can change the position of the sliders here. If the keyboard opens up, they should shift up. And we can also hide them on the lock screen when your phone is locked. There's no need to have them on particularly, unless you're launching an application, I suppose. But for what I'm using it for, that doesn't need to be on. And we can even hide this when the panel, quick settings panel is open. So here we can set the width of when it is activated. 
Now I've got mine set quite thin because I just want to be able to swipe from the side of the phone so I know that I'm actually doing the correct thing. We can set the distance so you can see the arrow on the left here, how far you actually have to swipe before the gesture is activated. And we can set a vibration to occur when we do that function. So don't really need one too big for that. So that's all the operations you can set. So if I just quickly show you how it works. So if I'm in an application, I can quickly go back. I can go to my recents and I can go home. So again, if I just leave it here, you can see on the right hand side here, back. And if I want to go to my recents or if I want to go back home. So this is really truly a one handed way to operate because when you're holding it in one hand, you can't really stretch your thumb down to the home button back or recent. So I really think that this is the best solution for that. Right. Next up, we have edge lighting plus. So this basically offers additional features and edge lighting settings for your screen. So we have the basic, we've got the wave effect, bubbles, multicolor, glow, glitter, hearts, fireworks, Clips, Echo, Spotlight, Fluid, Boomerang, Galaxy, Loop, Celebrate, and black hole. Now for each of these, we can actually customize colors. We can set the transparency. We can set how wide or narrow the outer bar is that's going around the screen. We can set the duration. Also in here, we can set different colors for different applications. So for example, if we add a keyword and the content in the notification contains say WhatsApp, we could then set that notification color to be green. And if we have one for Reddit, we can set that notification to be red. So you can set different colors for your different applications, which is quite nice. And that's as uh, complicated as that one gets. So next up we have edge touch. So here we can actually set areas of your screen which are not going to respond to touch. So if, for example, you have a zone across your screen like this, if you touch any of these places here, then nothing will happen. It's completely blocked from being used. And you can then add a grip zone. So if you're holding your phone and you know that you always, you know, your one finger always goes across here, then you can set that so that when your phone knows that you're gripping it, it will just ignore any touches in that area. And we have to set one for the landscape mode. And again, for the landscape mode, give it a name. I'll just call it test for the time being. And we have our test zone. So now if I touch in any of these areas whilst in another app, it will just be ignored. So that's quite handy if you're finding it, there's lots of accidental touch touches with your phone. I'm not finding that at all actually with the S20 here, 
with anything like the S8 where the screen was a lot rounder or the S9 even. S10 was quite round but is slightly flatter. Then that's really for people with rounded screens more than anything else. You can obviously go back in and customize your areas and delete them if you so wish. Right, last but not least, we have the sound assistant. So here we can personalize our sound setup for different times. So these are some examples they give, maybe a different scenario when you're at home, work or sleep. You can set the start and end times, what days, whether to be in vibrate mode, to mute medium ringtones, to play sound through the headphones after switching to vibrate mode, and to switch to vibrate mode when the headphones are connected. You can add your own scenarios in here as well, and you can customize them as you wish. So let's just go through the various options that we've got here. In the volume, we can set the volume panel theme. So the classic theme here is this one here, where it comes down and you have to sort of press an arrow and it comes down so you can set the different media application sounds and notification volumes. You can also set it to the zero mode here, where this is a side view. So if we have a look here. We'll see we've now got the side panel of the notifications whereas before we had the classic view which was like this we can set the color as well to make it slightly easier to see if we're struggling let's put it in the red mode here and the other nice thing we can do is when we're in the panel here we can actually set different volumes for different apps so for Twitch here we might want to set it to say 50% YouTube to be slightly less than Twitch for example we can also click on here to go back to the app so it's a bit of a shortcut and again we can switch back to YouTube if we want so that's quite handy and then if we click on the button on the side here we can actually send the sound to our Bluetooth headset and have another sound still coming out of the phone. So you can separate the app sound from the phone to a different headset, but still have your phone play something else. You can set your phone to control the media volume rather than the ringtone volume when you're using your volume keys. That's quite a useful one. We can set individual app volumes here. We, as you can see, we've already started setting some. You can add different apps into the list and set them accordingly. So if you've got a game which always loads up very loudly, let's say, Asphalt 9, we can set that down to, say, 50%. We can have a little floating button here. So if we press the volume button here, we'll see that there's actually a little sound assistant button that pops up as well. So you can quickly go into there. You can then configure the equalizer for your sound. It's really quite detailed, the amount of things you can do here. We can also change the amount that the volume will increase at. So if you find that when you're pressing the button, it's going up too quickly, you can press and hold here and have it go up in one step or whatever you choose. Just gives you a bit more granularity on the volume control. Here we can set multi-sound, so we can enable apps to play sounds at the same time. So if we turn that on, all apps can play the sound at the same time as other apps. If there's an application you only want to play through a Bluetooth headset, say a game or music then you can enable this select an app let's say amazon music and now amazon music will only ever play through a headset or bluetooth device assuming we set it so we can select on bluetooth device and now it's configured to do so we can set the sound quality and effects here so this is what we saw from the little quick bubble here so we can adjust all our different audio settings here and we can set preset equalizer, equalizer settings here too. Under the advanced settings at the bottom, we can switch from stereo to mono if we want. We can set an app to play and control the music when we press the multimedia keys on the connected headphones. I don't have any to show that with at the moment, but that is available too. Here we can control music with the volume keys. So to go to the next or previous track, we can enable the selfie stick mode, which allows you to still hear your phone audio when you've plugged in the selfie stick. Now that's normally going to be for the three and a half mil selfie sticks, but I guess that's just a leftover option from an older version. 
but if your phone does have a three and a half mil jack still then that's quite useful we can set whether to allow alerts through on the headphones i find it quite annoying so i could turn those off but allow the ringtone to come on here we can actually set the left and right speakers to be reversed and if we had some headphones plugged in we can actually set the sound balance here so that's quite a nice one as well the sound system there's lots of customization there for you to do and have a play around with to get the sort of perfect you know perfect setup for your phone and that is the last of the good lock items so hope you enjoyed the video there's lots of features as you can see in good lock it's a shame that some of them aren't actually built into the phone to start with but it's not hard to download them and stick them on for yourself and then you can just pick and choose which features you actually want from these lists so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please click the like button and subscribe to my channel and i will see you again in the next one